Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. Sparkle is one of those characters that actually changes everything. In this ultimate guide for Sparkle, we'll go over everything you need to know and whether or not Sparkle is the right choice for your account. Sparkle is the newest 5-star Quantum Harmony character and is designed for Hyper Carry style teams. And before we dive into the nitty gritty of her kit, let's talk about how Sparkle changes everything. Sparkle is clearly built for Hyper Carry teams, and thus Sparkle's biggest competition is Branya, which you'll see why when we get into her kit. But don't worry for those of you Branya stands out there because Sparkle doesn't power creep Branya in all situations. There are some very obvious characters that Sparkle sparkles much more than Branya sparkles. The most obvious one that everyone and their mother is thinking about is Dan Hung and Biber Lune. And I'm pleased to inform you that Sparkle is literally the best support for Dragon Man due to her skill point shenanigans. Sparkle is also by far the best option with quantum DPS characters that consume a lot of skill points. For example, both Ching Chi and Zila. Sparkle is a wonderful upgrade for our gambling little gremlin who snorts skill points for breakfast. Zila, on the other hand, also consumes a lot of skill points, although utilizing her with Sparkle does require more speed tuning, which we'll talk about later. Regardless, Sparkle is a massive buff to both of these quantum DPS characters. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about Xue Yi, but don't worry, Sparkle is also an incredible support character for her as well since she is also a quantum DPS character. Finally, Sparkle is currently a great option for follow-up attack characters like Jing Yuan, Dr. Ratio, Topaz, and even Himiko and Herta. As these characters, if you use them as hyper carries, will lose Branya's buff for significant portions of their kits. While Sparkle is able to maintain her buffs on these follow up attack characters even during their follow up attacks. For pretty much most of the other crit based DPS characters, she's still really good, but she's at best a side grade or a bit worse than Branya. Because if you're able to keep up with skill point consumption, for example, characters like Blade, Jing Liu, Arlen, etc., then Branya's ability to literally double the amount of actions they take is pretty hard to compete with. And as for Dot characters, well, unfortunately, I don't recommend Sparkle, because her massive crit damage buff is completely wasted. Although she is still usable since advanced forwarding and bonus damage are still good for DOT teams. And last but not the least, one of the biggest value propositions that Sparkle provides to a player's account is improving the value of non-speed boots. Because Sparkle basically transfers her own speed to a DPS character via her kit, which we'll talk about in a second, you're better off, in most situations, building that DPS character with main stat boots. This is a huge value added for making relic farming much more manageable and less dependent on getting those super rare broken speed boots. So now with the how Sparkle changes everything out of the way, we can Sparkle into the nitty gritty of her kit. Starting with her basic attack, Monodrama. Fortunately, there isn't much drama about her basic attack because Sparkle will very seldomly use it. You'll pretty much only use it if you don't have enough skill points. It does, however, have the nice added bonus of generating 10 extra energy, thus making it generate the same amount as her skill does, which is the perfect segue to talk about her skill, Dream Diver. Dream Diver costs the standard one skill point, and you can use it on an ally. It will advance forward that ally by 50%, and increases that ally's crit damage by 24% of Sparkle's crit damage, plus 45% at trace level 10. For example, if Sparkle has 200% crit damage, then the ally will get 93% crit damage buff, which is a massive amount of crit damage. And what makes this buff really unique is the fact this crit damage buff lasts until the beginning of the ally's next turn. This small detail actually does matter, and it ties into what I mentioned earlier, how she is incredibly good for follow-up attackers. Normally, follow-up attackers will lose one-turn buffs, like for example, Branya's elemental skill, and thus, many of their follow-up attacks won't be buffed by one-turn buffs. However, this one-turn buff is unique in that it actually lasts until the beginning of their next turn, thus allowing things like Jing Yuan's Lightning Lord and Topaz's Numbi to still be buffed by her skill. 
And up next is her talent, Red Herring. Red Herring provides the currently very unique increase to the skill point cap from 5 to 7. And when literally any character on the team spends a skill point, everyone on the team will gain a stack on her talent for 2 turns. Each stack provides 6% bonus damage for up to 3 stacks, which totals to 18% bonus damage. This is effectively a 100% uptime 18% bonus damage buff to the entire team. It's very rare for this buff to actually expire, since you will almost always use a skill point before it expires on any individual character. Sparkle also just passively increases the entire team's attack by 15%. And with 1, 2, 3 quantum characters on the team, including Sparkle herself, all quantum characters gain an additional 5, 15, and 30% attack respectively. This bonus attack for quantum characters will help future-proof Sparkle as she'll always have Mono Quantum as a team to fall back to. Then we have her ultimate, the hero with a thousand faces. The first effect that her ultimate provides is that it instantly recovers a whopping 4 skill points. Also, all allies gain Cypher for 2 turns. Cypher simply increases the damage bonus from her talent by 10% per stack. So at 3 stacks of her talent, this becomes a massive 48% damage boost to everyone on the team. And last but not the least is her technique, Unreliable Narrator. From an exploration perspective, the entire team gains stealth and cannot be targeted by enemies in the overworld. And upon entering battle, you'll just immediately gain 3 skill points. This front loads 3 skill points for your team, which can seriously increase your damage output for a few rounds. For talent priority, I guess I'd level her skill, ultimate, and talent roughly equally. I wouldn't even bother leveling up her basic attack though, since if you can't tell, she's not going to be doing any meaningful damage. As for rotation, Sparkle is perfectly designed to be able to ultimate every 3 turns. Since her ultimate only costs 110 energy, Sparkle only needs 15.79% energy regen to always 3 turn ultimate, and you can achieve this by simply equipping an energy regen rope. Ideally, for her rotation, you'll want to use her skill every time she moves, as this allows her to provide 100% uptime on her massive crit damage buff. So her typical rotation is just simply E E E Q. With this rotation, you'll generate 4 skill points for every 3 skill points that she spends. So basically, you'll be generating 1 surplus skill point for every 3 turns. Surprisingly, Sparkle is actually not the skill point generating factory over a long battle that one might assume. But since she front loads so many skill points due to her technique, and her turn to ultimate in Memory of Chaos, and since battles generally don't last too long, this front loading of skill points will allow you to hit the ground running at full speed for quite some time. And another great design choice that Hoyoverse implemented for Sparkle is that if you do have to resort to using her basic attack, if you remember from earlier, her basic attack generates an extra 10 energy, meaning that she can still 3 turn ultimate no matter what. As we can see, Sparkle is easily able to maintain 100% uptime on her skills buffs. As for her ultimate, you should use it on the DPS's turn, as this will actually allow for 3 active turns of Sparkle's ultimate's buff on that DPS character. This also effectively allows Sparkle to provide 100% uptime on all her buffs if manually played for many situations, but not all situations. Fortunately, building Sparkle in most situations is not too complicated. This honestly requires a much more in-depth explanation, but I'll try to keep it simple. Target 160 speed on Sparkle for Memory of Chaos. This allows Sparkle teams to, much more comfortably and consistently, clear Memory of Chaos in 3 rounds. Basically, you'll get 4 Sparkle turns in 2 rounds. And because the next wave also provides a 150 action value first round, you can get 4 more Sparkle turns in just the next 2 rounds, which kind of confusingly leads to a 3 round Memory of Chaos clear. An added benefit to this 160 speed Sparkle build is that you can now build a really slow but high damaging DPS character. 
For example, you can now use attack boots on Dan Hung and Byron Lune. Sparkle will effectively make Dan Hung have the same speed as her because she'll advance him forward by 50% with her elemental skill. This of course applies to any DPS character for Sparkle to buff. This also improves the value of main stat boots over speed boots when you utilize these characters with Sparkle. As for main stats on Sparkle herself, you want a crit damage body to increase the buff from her skill, you want speed boots on her to be able to hit 160 speed, and I guess HP or defense sphere work, although literally any stat is fine for the sphere. Most importantly for the sphere, you'll want it to have a lot of speed to reach that 160 speed breakpoint, and of course an energy regen rope, so that way Sparkle can 3 turn ultimate. For substats, target 160 speed or more, which can be a bit challenging. In fact, for Memory of Chaos specifically, it can even be worth it to not use a crit damage body, if that allows you to get 160 speed as this is just losing 15.6-ish percent crit damage on her skills buff. However, for other gameplay modes, this 160 speed breakpoint isn't as important. Besides speed, you'll also want as much crit damage as you can squeeze out to maximize her crit damage buff from her skill. For her 4-piece relic sets, the 2-piece messengers is one of the best options you have for maximizing her speed stat and hitting the 160 speed breakpoint. This allows you to mix and match relics as needed to maximize her speed and crit damage. The 4-piece messengers and 2-piece musketeers are of course both good options as well. As for other sets, I wouldn't prioritize any of the other sets, but some of them do provide some survivability bonuses like the 2-piece longevous or Wuthering guard thing. For the 2-piece rope and ball, any of the 2-piece support sets like the Broken Keel, Fleet of Ageless, or Pentacony are all great options. Broken Keel is extra notable as it actually ends up providing 12.4% crit damage since it also boosts Sparkle's own crit damage by 10%. Just keep in mind that you'll need a bit of effect resistance for this effect. Now I did want to give some specific examples for some additional speed builds for Sparkle. Overall her most universal build is to target 160 speed, and you'll want to use her with a DPS with a max damage, no speed build. Great options for 160 speed Sparkle include Dan Hung and Byron Lune, Ching Chue, Jing Yuan, Dr. Ratio, and Topaz. Another option is the minus one speed Sparkle build, where you go for the classic 135 speed DPS character with 134 speed on Sparkle for two turns on the first round of Memory of Chaos. Sparkle is able to provide the DPS character with an extra turn for every other Sparkle turn. However, do keep in mind that the buff of time will not be great with this build. While I personally prefer the 160 speed build for most situations, this setup might have some unique applications as well. But when it comes to speed tuning for Zila, this is effectively an extension of the previous minus one speed sparkle build. But instead, you'll need to be one speed slower than Zila after Zila's speed buff. This way Sparkle will be able to provide Zila a free turn every other Zila turn. So yeah, just check what your Zealous speed is after her speed buff and target having a bit less speed on your Sparkle. Now a fun hipster way to play Sparkle is with both Branya and Sparkle, with both of them having similar speeds. For example, Branya with 161 speed and Sparkle with 160 speed. I'm not sure how strong this setup is, but it's usable with low skill point characters like Blade, or even characters like Argenti who can get away with occasionally skipping his skill. This allows these DPS characters to move twice per cycle, even with a very slow build. Again, this setup is unlikely to be optimal since Ronmei plus Branya is likely the better option for these teams, but this is a lot of fun because you get to go really fast. Phew, okay let's next talk about her light cones. Her signature light cone, Earthly Escapade, is undoubtedly her best option and basically just provides the entire team with 10% crit rate and 35.68% crit damage. Overall this is her best option. But the battle isn't over is overall her next best option in my opinion, providing a free skill point every other turn and bonus damage to the ally moving after Sparkle, which for the 160 speed build is generally going to be the DPS character. Keep in mind though that the energy regen from this light cone is basically useless on Sparkle. Past and Future is a great free to play option providing the character moving after Sparkle with bonus damage. It's worth noting that both But the Battle Isn't Over and the Past and Future are tricky to use with minus one speed Sparkle. So do keep that in mind as one of the other supports on your team might cut in line to steal this buff from your DPS character. And finally Dance 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 is a decent option 
providing advance forward for the whole team when she uses her ultimate. Planetary Rendezvous is also a great option, specifically with quantum DPS characters like Zila and Ching Chue. Let's quickly talk about her Eidolons and pull priority. Both her signature Lycone and Eidolon 1 are great options, with each being situationally better than the other. Honestly, you can't really go wrong with either of them. So overall, just don't sweat about too much and go for whichever one you prefer. There's a lot of small technical nuances as to which option is better for her and what situation. For example, S1 is better if you need that crit value due to poor relic quality. However, her Eidolon 1 is better for autoplay and on minus one speed sparkle builds. As on autoplay, sparkle will use her ultimate on her own turn and not the DPS's turn thus wasting a turn of buffs. However, for quantum teams or when paired with Silver Wolf or Pella, her Eidolon 2 is incredible. So because her Eidolon 2 is incredible for quantum teams, for quantum teams specifically, I would actually recommend her Eidolon 1 over her Superimposition 1 Light Cone. The reason her Eidolon 2 is so good for quantum teams is because Defense Shred gets better the more of it you have, up to the maximum of 100% Defense Shred. Eidolon 4 adds another skill point and Eidolon 6 adds even more crit damage with the crit damage buff now brokenly applying to the whole team, thus allowing whales to use her on multi-DPS teams. Speaking of teams, teams are pretty straightforward with Sparkle. It's pretty much just the classic hyper carry team with a DPS character, Sparkle, a second support, and a sustain character. For example, one of the most popular Dan Hung and Byward Lune plus Sparkle teams is going to be the Dill Pickle himself, Sparkle, Ting Yuen, plus a sustain character. As for quantum teams, Mono Quantum will be very powerful with a quantum DPS character like Zila, Sparkle, Silver Wolf, and Fushan or Lynx. Basically, just stick with traditional hyper carry team comps if you want your Sparkle to Sparkle. Sparkle the brightest. So as we can see, Sparkle is an incredible harmony support character, able to glitz and glam herself into the meta for many hyper carry team archetypes. Fortunately, Sparkle can be built and used in a pretty simple and straightforward way. Just target 160 speed and pair her with a slow DPS character that's built to maximize their damage output. This also allows you to not worry about building speed on your DPS characters, so if you have some godly attack percent boots, well, I bet you're going to be pretty happy if you get Sparkle. However, Sparkle can be a very advanced character as well, with fancy speed tuning options like the 4-piece messenger, dance dance dance, minus one speed builds, and even things like Von Wax, which I would consider advanced text for those that enjoy squeezing every last bit of value out of their characters. Again, to reiterate, Sparkle is a highly recommended support character for high skill point usage characters like the Dill Pickle. She's also the best option for quantum DPS characters like Ching Chue, Zila, and Xue Yi. And currently, she's an incredible option for hyper carry follow up attackers like Jing Yuan, Dr. Ratio, Topaz, Himiko, and Herta. Sparkle is also a great option for Branya less individuals as well. Personally, I do expect future support characters to squeeze Sparkle out from being the best in slot option for some of these teams, but I also think Sparkle will always be the best harmony support for quantum DPS characters. Let me know if there's anything I missed and be sure to check the comments below for additional useful insights, tips, or corrections from myself or from the audience. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.